Good morning. I hope everyone is well rested from the lovely party yesterday. Uh, who went to the party? Hands up. Great. Who's hungover? Great. <laughs> Who's still drunk? Um, so, um, hello everyone. I, I'm Ash Davis. I'm a GDE in Berlin for Android and Kotlin. I'm working with Snap Mobile. Um, for a variety of clients, and uh, I'm here today talking about this year in Android. So um, this is not the type of talk that you're going to walk away from having learned something. Uh, that's not the goal. <laughs> I'm just going to barrage you with news and facts and things that happened so that you walk out here in a bit of a kind of hazy stupor. Um, but hopefully you find it funny, so that's, that's the goal. Um, I kind of noted that the scale at which the Android community evolves and moves is so aggressively fast, uh, in, in a good way. Like the development in the open source community is really, 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 really fast. But it can be a bit difficult to kind of keep up with everything on, as it changes so quickly. Um, and there's so many useful libraries under active development, and there's new projects being started, like existing projects being shelved or deprecated or moved to other things. Uh, and it's not just uh, about Android as well. There's going to be some stuff about tech and, uh, unfortunately, some British politics, because that's always funny. Uh, and this background you're looking at here is the Cosmic Cliffs Carina Nebula, captured by the James Webb Telescope uh, earlier this year. So that's one of the things, uh, earlier last year, sorry. That's one of the things I'm going to hopefully share with you. Um, so the idea for this talk came after uh, DroidCon Berlin. And I'm quite surprised that you're all here today, because actually in the abstract, I wrote that DroidCon Berlin is the best conference in the world. Uh, so whilst I believe that it's true, yeah, I said that. Come at me, Paris. Um, <laughs> I uh, was surprised that I didn't get any backlash from that. But anyway, yeah, it's my favorite city, and no bias, of course, but yeah, Paris is wonderful, don't worry. <laughs> um, and there's such a huge amount of knowledge transfer going on at these conferences, and like, it's really hard to keep up, so it'd be quite nice kind of, to kind of look at these things. I thought I'd start off with uh, kind of taking a quick look at what topics were being discussed, or like the hot topics of 2002. So uh, starting from July, um, start of the year, why not? Uh, so we've got uh, Jetpack Compose, this should come as no surprise. Compose is the probably most popular topic. You've probably seen a lot of talks about this already. Um, Kotlin Multiplatform, uh, I think most of these talks came from Kevin at Touch Lab, so uh, thanks to him for that. Um, performance and monitoring is also quite popular, uh, as it's always a topic that never really gets old. Um, Form factors and Kotlin coroutines became quite uh, popular, uh, especially now with the, the advent of foldable devices. Um, so we're playing with different display orientations, different kind of uh, screen sizes, and a lot of different varieties. So um, these different form factors have become a very kind of interesting topic and a, a point of uh, active development. Uh, as well, since uh, the, since the pandemic has like, had an impact on the way we work and the way we live, uh, I've seen a lot of increase in like, self-advocacy and soft skills uh, talks on how to work effectively from home or how to manage work-life balance. Uh, these things are really healthy things to discuss, and it's quite nice to see them happening. And my own personal favorite, testing and plugin development, also Jetpack Glance, which is for using Compose on wearable devices. And because Google is wonderful at naming things, we've got modern Android development. I think I preferred better Android development, but... <laughs> <laughs> so, um, yeah, starting off the year in July, because why not? Um, July, you know, known for its uh, excessive displays of freedom and colorful fireworks. Um, but it's kind of hard to remember what happened back in July. This was like you know, a year ago. It's a bit ambiguous. So I thought about maybe using you know, the Compose version as a, a way of like kind of validating this, but it's not on this slide. But anyway, um, starting off July uh, with my cat's birthday. Um, so this one on the left is Cotty, and on the right named Pi. Uh, my fiance and I named them after our favorite programming languages. Um, She's a data scientist, and you can imagine what Cotty is short for. That's right, it's short for a pain in the ass. So, Compose UI, or if we're using this as a dating mechanism, compose the first of the first of the first, or the 111th or the 11th first, I don't know. I didn't really think this through. Um, but anyway, on um, 
Compose 1.1.1 was bringing improvements to touch targets and focus handling and promoted some APIs that were all, uh, kind of already experimental. Um, but the last stable release before this was on February 23rd, um, so it's been a little while coming. Uh, so July saw a healthy release of a lot of Android X libraries. We've got the now in Android episode 64 and the backstage, Android backstage uh, developers. Backstage, excuse me. Um, so, and then we've got Android Studio Dolphin Beta 5, uh, Android 13, uh, Compose UI 1.2, which introduces an independent library versioning, which means that these individual components can be versioned separately, so you're not always waking on one huge release. Uh, Coroutines, Kotlin, and uh, the introduction of the Privacy Sandbox. If you're not familiar with the Privacy Sandbox, uh, this was released as Developer Preview 4, and it's Google's approach to uh, retaining your privacy while still being able to deliver advertisements. Um, since this is, of course, a big part of Google's uh, uh, revenue, um, it's quite important to still be able to deliver this whilst preserving and respecting your privacy. Um, awesome. Then we've got Android 13. This is in beta now. So uh, as you may know, the Android 13 uh, deployment goes through a period of developer previews, beta releases, and then when it finally hits platform stability, the API is no longer change, and it's just under testing. So in July, Google released the fourth release of Android 13, uh, the second since reaching platform stability. So we've only got a few weeks until Android 13 is fully live. Um, if you're not familiar, Android 13 introduces runtime permissions for notifications, uh, clipboard previews, and job scheduler prefetching, so you can uh, prefetch some data in the background. Also, Kotlin 1.7, uh, many improvements to the generic type inference, where the underscore used to uh, reference the type if it's already been implied somewhere. Definitely not null pinky promise types. Um, I f don't fully understand why things can be null if in by design, it's supposed to be a non-nullable language, but here we are. Um, <laughs> the build inference, which is able to kind of infer types if you're using things like build string, up, build list, build map, for example. Uh, the underscore operator, as mentioned, and opt-in stability. This was the annotation that you needed to add to anything when you actually ex uh, opt into using experimental annotations. It was quite funny that the annotation itself was also uh, an opt-in annotation, but that is no longer the case. Um, yeah, and the first of what was a very interesting saga and continues to be a complete laughable train wreck. Um, there was, of course, a lot of events leading up to this, uh, which I hadn't really been covering, and I'm apologizing in advance that this appears in this talk much more than it deserves. Uh, but yeah. Normally, Twitter wouldn't make it into presentation, but frankly, I think uh, it's moved from being a platform which was really useful to development and knowledge sharing to an absolute, yeah, train wreck. But it's kind of like watching a slow motion crash. It's like, you know it's bad, but you can't take your eyes away from it. Uh, but it's not all bad. Uh, in July, uh, NATO signed the accession protocols for Finland and Sweden. This is awesome news. Um, and just in case your knowledge of European geography is worse than mine, it's these two. Um, also in July, uh, Google celebrated 10 years of the Google Play Store. So it's quite interesting that it's been around for so, so long, and it seems sort of ubiquitous, and like, it's always been there, right? Um, because it's the de facto place for where we install, on, where we download our apps. Moving on to August, compose the first to second. Uh, it is the month of the International Beer Day and then the International Hangover Day, which is very appropriate. Uh, I gave a talk in Chicago about everything as an API. Uh, if you have the chance, go check out the video. Um, and, but unfortunately, Chicago Roboto is not continuing anymore. Um, so that'll be the last that was happening. Uh, very sad. It was a very lovely conference. So, lots of updates here. Um, August saw a minor update to Jetpack Compose, and Google pushed the Android 13 source code uh, to AOSP, making it the final public release. We also had Android Studio Electric Eel Canary 10, Dolphin RC1, and Chipmunk Patch 2. Uh, we've got some Samsung foldable devices released at the Galaxy, uh, Connect, uh, sorry, Galaxy event and serialization 1.4, acquiring 1.7 of Kotlin, OKIO integration, and uh, zipline from the folks at Cash, Cash App. Uh, we also celebrated five years at Kotlin of, of Kotlin at Android. It was in 2017 that the Google I.O. keynote, uh, Kotlin was announced as a primary language, which was amazing. Um, 
And it's been five years since that, so it's, a, it's been quite interesting to see how much the ecosystem has evolved and adopted Kotlin. And I can't even imagine writing a single line of Java code anymore. And I'm glad that that's more of a nightmare than a daily routine. There's some great episodes from Talking Kotlin um, from Jake Wardland and Suckett. Um, and some design patterns on Kotlin, so podcasts I recommend you uh, subscribing to if you don't already. Uh, again, with the Twitter saga, uh, we've got the Twitter's former security chief says the company lied about bots and safety. Oh, no. Um, yeah, legendary hacker Peter Mudge Zatko um, was sort of let go from the company because he tried to fix things because it was a train wreck. Um, but this sort of added to the controversy of the potential purchase, and, you know, things got a bit muddy. But moving on to September, the month apparently named Oktoberfest. Okay. Um, this I'm going to call the Compose the First, the Second, the First. Um, our date format analogy is starting to break down a little bit here, but let's you know, see how far we can go. Um, we had DroidCon New York, amazing conference. Um, Bill and I gave a talk about Molecule. Um, and then moving into September, because that was a short month. Uh, no, it's the same month. Uh, so the Android Gradle plugin was 7.3 was released. Uh, we've got Android Studio, uh, Flamingo Canary 2, Electric Eel Beta 1, Dolphin Stable, and some Android X patch updates. Uh, so lots have happened here with you know, three installments of Now in Android and two published episodes of the Android Developer Backstage podcast. Um, I think it was, yeah, it was in September, so uh, I'm not sure if Chet's here, but... Um, this was the first time they were back into the uh, recording studio, so you can tell the audio quality is a little bit better. You still have to listen to their voices, though. Um, and Google uh, released the fifth developer preview of the Privacy Sandbox. So the last stable release of Android Studio was actually Chipmunk back in May, which can be a bit misleading because you, know, you might see releases of Android Studio every, every month or several times a month. But bear in mind that these are previews and alphas and betas, and um, it's only like uh, it's every few months that you get a stable release. So this is pretty cool. Um, it introduced uh, composed animation previews, recomposition counts, uh, the new logcat formatter, uh, and Gradle managed devices and Wear OS support. Um, and we saw the release of Kotlin 1.7.2. Um, so while K2 actually has been introduced as a compiler now, uh, it's still in alpha. Uh, so uh, support for existing plugins is still being stabilized, but this is where they introduce compatibility with all open, no arg, sound with the receiver, and Lombok, because Lombok's still a thing. Um, there's also some improvements to open end ranges where you can use the less than operator instead of until. Um, I don't know what was wrong with until, but fair enough. Uh, generic inline classes, so you can actually add a generic type parameter to a value class now. And the native memory manager. This was to improve support for Kotlin native and coroutines. And finally, uh, the introduction of the JVM toolchain. This is where you might need to use different versions of Java for uh, different parts of the same project. So you have one monorepo with a Gradle configuration, and then you want to be able to set the JVM toolchain to different versions based upon you know, different modules if you need to do that. Um, it's not very often you need that requirement, but it is a requirement sometimes. And some documentation. We all love documentation. Um, we also saw the release of uh, DroidCon Berlin conversations. So these were a series of conversations held at DroidCon Berlin. Um, and very interesting. I walk past them all the time. Eventually, maybe, maybe they might invite me for one. Forever alone. Um, Google launches Compose Camp, a series of in-person virtual sessions to make Compose learning even easier. I believe this was uh, required only for uh, students, um, but it's still a, an amazing uh, development. But uh, taking some sad news now, um, we saw the absolutely unexpected and completely unpredictable shutdown of Google Stadia. Nobody saw that coming. Uh, we also saw that the Pixelbook team was quietly un, uh, canceled and the team dissolved, which was very disappointing. I was very much looking forward to a new Pixelbook at Google I.O. But hey, there we go. Uh, if you do still own a Google Stadia controller, though, you can switch it to Bluetooth. Uh, if you go to websites um, on, the, on the Google Stadia website, you'll be able to kind of follow the wizard there to actually turn it into Bluetooth mode, where it becomes quite a nice controller that you can use with your uh, phone or something. 
Speaking of graveyards, the Queen died. I was unsure how well that was going to land. <laughs> so, yeah, unfortunately, uh, Queen Elizabeth died uh, in September, and the British reacted in the most British way ever possible. We formed a queue. Uh, there was the queue, dubbed so because it went all the way from where she was laying in state, uh, all the way round to, um, was it, Southwark Park. So this was 16 kilometers, 24-hour wait time. And it got so excessive that if you see this red area here, this is where they had like a holding pen for people to queue to get into the queue. I can't imagine anything more British. And uh, on a serious note, unfortunately, we also uh, saw the passing of Kathleen Booth. Uh, she was responsible for writing the world's first assembly language. Um, and many speculate that due to her work at Burbeck, modern computing wouldn't really be possible, uh, or at least it wouldn't look like uh, it, it does today. And she's also namesake of one of the rooms that we use in DroidCon Berlin. Uh, and some tech news. Uh, so the European Union, uh, or the European Commission, publishes a policy for the Cyber Resilience Act. Now, on paper, this seems to be working in our favor to defend the uh, stability and work for the uh, security of open source software but it doesn't actually look all that friendly once you read into it. Um, it's kind of toothless because the commission are not very good at actually listening to developers, but uh, it's definitely worth keeping this on your radar because it could uh, affect how you uh, work with uh, regulations and things. So GDPR was always fun. This could be the second. October, composed the first, the second, it doesn't work anymore. That's, I'm just gonna drop that analogy. Um, we saw a number of conferences. Uh, we've got a Droid in Italy, Singapore, Egypt, and London, and the start of the Android Summit. Uh, this was a multinational, uh, multi-location event uh, that started off in the Bay Area, covering various different topics, and then moving on to London a little bit later. So JetBrains announced the beta of Kotlin Multiplatform Mobile, a technology that allows developers to share logic between Android and iOS. If you're probably already familiar with multiplatform, this isn't an individual plugin, it's just a group of technologies, uh, and uh, there is a browser plugin that makes it a bit easier, but uh, Google in tandem then works on uh, releasing the experimental preview of some Jetpack multi-platform libraries. And we started with the data store and annotations library in Jetpack. Releases. So we've got now in Android episode 70, uh, a lot of Android X releases, so, um, but nothing really significant of note besides Compose 1.3, but I'll cover that in a second. Uh, we've got Android Studio Dolphin patch 1, because something broke. Uh, included general fixes, general fixes. Electric Eel Beta 4, uh, and Canary, a Flamingo Canary 9, a uh, 6, sorry. Got material design components for, one, um, for Compose Multiplatform 1.2. Uh, JetBrains Fleet Preview, if you haven't had the chance, this is similar to VS Code Lite, uh, sorry, yeah, VS Code, um, but it has the JetBrains niceties. It runs the uh, IntelliSense engine as a separate thread process so that you can enable or disable it uh, as and when you need, uh, say if you need to work in a you know, quick, light project, uh, quick light text editor, which is really quite useful. Uh, and we saw a new Jetpack multi-platform and the multi-platform mobile beta with material components and serialization 1.4. One. That, that was a lot. So Compose Multi-Platform 1.2 uh, introduces ProGuard's optimizer for obfuscation without special configuration. So this is the idea that it should just work out the box. Nice idea. I'd like to see it in practice. Uh, improved focus management for keyboard navigation with modifiers and improved sliders. Uh, we've got the new on-click and on-drag modifier that allows fine-grained control for desktop click handling. So uh, say, for example, if you want to click whilst pressing control or shift or something on a keyboard, uh, this provides that facility to do so. Uh, we've got introduction of RTL support and conveyor compatibility. I hadn't learned about conveyor before uh, starting this talk, actually, and it's a quite nice integration that uh, allows you to distribute your app with online updates. It's, it's very nice. There's actually a lot of stuff in this talk that I didn't know about, so it's been a really rewarding exercise. You know, going through all my notes and going through all this research, find all the stuff that's happened this year I had no clue about. Uh, like I said, we saw the... Um, First public release of a JetBrains fleet, uh, the next generation low ID by JetBrains. Uh, this is really cool. Uh, if you haven't had the chance to try it, I very much recommend doing so. Um, it is, like I said, a very lightweight thing, so you won't get all the niceties that exist in IntelliJ. Um, but if you just need it for some quick editing, uh, it's really useful. 
Um, and Google hosted the annual Made by Google event in New York City to announce the new hardware lineup, not including the cancelled Chromebook. Very disappointed. Um, but no unexpected surprises because these were heavily leaked beforehand. Um, I think the leaking of technology announcements got so bad that Google just said, you know what, we need to own this. So they just started announcing it at Google I.O. Um, so we've got the Pixel 7 Pro, Tablet Watch, Nest Hardware, and Chromecast. Uh, in the late October, Kotlin Foundation launched the Kotlin multi-platform content with the contest, uh, with the winner getting an all expenses paid to Kotlin Conf 23. Uh, only eligible students could take part. Um, obviously, you know, it's, it's finished this year, sadly, uh, Kotlin Conf. Um, but it's worth taking note of for next year. If you're still studying next year um, and you see this pop up, take the opportunity. It's really rewarding. Um, on to politics. Anarchy in the UK. Um, in the space of a single week, self-titled fighter, not a quicker, quitter, Liz Truss quits. Um, outlasted by an unrefrigerated iceberg lettuce, uh, wearing a wig after only 49 days in office, replaced by the chef from Ratatouille, now a lifestyle coach after being abandoned by the rat. <laughs> Question time. What has more than $30 billion but no legs? Anyone? As Zuckerberg's metaverse avatar. <laughs> During the annual Connect event, Meta demonstrated legs in a Horizon world, but it was later revealed to be animations. Um, so they do not yet have legs. This is a lie, and hardly surprising. Um, oh, that was supposed to animate over it. So. It's masked by the Mastodon icon, but this is a photo of the, the space Karen carrying a sink into the office of Twitter. That was the sinking feeling. Um, yeah, world's richest child, Chief Twat Elmo, uh, finalized the Twitter takeover after trying to escape but failed. Uh, visits the headquarters with a sink and immediately fires everybody. What a lovely guy. Meanwhile, the Android community begins its mass exodus to Mastodon. Still a bit quiet there, but uh, we're making progress. Uh, November. So Google introduces the camera viewfinder artifact to quickly implement some camera previews. We've got the EAP champions for JetBrains and the sponsorship of the advent of code. And for releases, busy month from the DevRel team. Uh, we've got three episodes of Now in Android and three episodes of Android Developers Backstage in one month. I'm making up some time there. Uh, we've got some um, new Android X releases, lots of releases there. I'm not going to go into details. We've got Android Studio Electric Eel RC1 released, uh, Flaming on Canary 9, uh, Compose 1.3.1 patch is released, including uh, all the changes for 1.3.0 with new experimental APIs, uh, look ahead layout, and modifier.node. Uh, JetBrains released Copland 1.8.0 beta. Uh, and they published the results of the developer satisfaction survey. No surprise, developers are satisfied with Kotlin. Uh, the Dev Summit moves on to London, and lots of fun times were had, um, covering security and privacy personalization capabilities, and clearly some very, very, very important drinks and group photos. I think I'm, I'm in the bottom left one. Um, We've got a Touch of Multi-Platform with uh, Jake Wharton. Uh, Touch of Multi-Platform is a fantastic name. Kevin's not here, I guess, so uh, yeah. Uh, with Jesse about the weird, ambitious multi-platform things that they work in with the Cash app. Um, we've got uh, Talking Kotlin um, on MongoDB and Realm with their new multi-platform product. And we saw the introduction of Health Connect. This was after Google uh, acquired Fitbit. And in order to kind of satisfy regulation of regulatory uh, authorities, um, sort of pipe this information through Health Connect to allow you to share this data with your uh, wearables and health, uh, health providers. Not providers, sorry, that makes it sound like an insurance company. Yeah, it's a way of sharing health data, so that's cool. Finally, December. Um, it sort of got a bit quiet during December because of like some religious thing, um, like a baby on a cross or something, I don't know. Um, 
so we saw a lot of releases. Uh, so James Ward joins Chet and everyone at the Android developers backstage uh, to discuss Kotlin and K2. Uh, we've got Android, uh, now an Android episode 74. Uh, Android Studio, uh, Electric Eel RC3, Android 13 for t TV, Flamingo Canary 10, Kotlin 1.8 with experimental JVM functions and improvements to Objective-C compatibility. Uh, and Google releases Android 13 TV with improvements for performance and accessibility and Compose for Wear OS. 1.1 with improvements to UX and accessibility. You can see there's a general trend here with UX and accessibility. Uh, JetBrains announced the release of Kotlin DL, which is their, oops, which is their deep learning library with Android support. Um, it has interoperability with TensorFlow and PyTorch. Um, and I think as a Welsh person, I really appreciate the help in identifying sheep. Ha, ha, ha. He's well. <laughs> um, yeah, after having a release for mobile devices, uh, Android 13 makes it to TV, including improvements to the Audio Manager API and uh, defaults. We also saw Compose for Wear OS 1.1, the first stable release since July. Even though there have been many alpha releases, this is the first stable. It brings outline styles for chips and buttons with the possibility to modify shapes and, uh, with method overloads. Inclusive inclusion of placeholder modifiers, where you can have this nice little shimmer effect. Uh, additional parameters to the curved text style. Continuing the Twitter saga. Twitter abruptly bans all links to Instagram, Mastodon, and other competitors, because that's not illegal. Um, and this, and this year ended, or that last year ended with the best tweet ever imaginable uh, by Greta Thunberg, who absolutely annihilated uh, this asshole to a misogynistic crisp. Um, funny story. Uh, somebody actually created the website, getalife.com, and it's uh, a hall of fame for people who get absolutely annihilated online. It has one entry but a whole load of memes. It's really funny. Go check it out. Um, so starting 2023, hooray, happy new year. That was lame. Uh, the Android text team joined the folks at Android developers backstage to discuss text. Uh, we've got the Android Gradle plugin 7.4.0, uh, Android Studio Electric Eel Stable. So we've got another stable release. The last one was in uh, September. Um, Flamingo Beta 1 and Giraffe Canary 2. You can see the naming scheme here with animals. Uh, JetBrains released Kotlin 1.8 uh, with the standard library updates, and Google releases the first public version of the extension SDK. Oh, yeah, and we have the uh, GitHub releases CLI 2.2.0 uh, with extension discovery. So lots of stuff there. Uh, yeah, so like I said, it was the first stable release since September. Uh, Electric Eel is the next iteration. We've got composed previews that update automatically, which is really cool. Um, and visual linting for views, uh, universal problems panel, and improved sync performance. Um, this significantly updates, upgrades the build analysis and automatic fixes. My favorite thing about this actually was the desktop, emula desktop emulator. So you can kind of test how your app might behave on a Chromebook uh, or on, you know, um, a foldable device where the screen size might change or something. Um, and if you're a fan of using a physical device instead of an emulator, um, and you maybe use Visor or Screen Copy, uh, this is now built into Android Studio, which is awesome. I don't have to run an additional program for that. Uh, we had the Expert Summit in Europe, which was hosted in the Google office in Berlin at the start of this year. Um, I was very happy to see Berlin as a location. Um, completely unbiased opinion. I like that city. Uh, and we got February, so GitHub partners with the European Commission to improve cybersecurity and support developers. Um, and we've got some more releases. So modular system components from mainline team, as Chet and Roman get a bit more consistent in their scheduling um, with an episode every month. <laughs> Google releases the first developer preview of Android 14, starting off the release schedule uh, cycle of uh, Android, as I showed you earlier. We've got Android Studio Electric Eel Patch 1 to uh, fix some bugs, and Beta 3 Giraffe and uh, Giraffe Canary 7, and uh, Atom, or a touch of multi-platform episode 4 with Anise Davis and Colin Lee. 
We also had an update to uh, Kotlin native targets, so how, Kotlin, Kotlin, uh, sorry, how JetBrains um, manages their support tiers. Um, then they sort of acknowledged that a few of these targets are exotic, and they wanted to test the limits of Kotlin in the early days. Uh, but it's not actually that uh, manageable to kind of keep support for these. So they dropped some uh, deprecated targets, mostly being 32-bit or x86 platforms, uh, which will be released, uh, removed in 1.9. And then we've got these three tiers, uh, which represent their levels of support. So um, their CI will run uh, very, various versions of Kotlin uh, with these targets, um, and then the kind of support gets a bit kind of tiered off near the end. Awesome. Uh, the chuggering. If you're unfortunate enough to still be using Java, um, you have my deepest condolences. Um, but you're happy to know that Google releases a new version of the API Desugaring based on Android 13 and Java 11 language APIs. So if you're not familiar with Desugaring, uh, Desugaring is the um, feature that allows you to use some more um, later versions of Java APIs in earlier versions of Android, because as we know, Android doesn't actually run on Java or the JVM. It has its own uh, runtime, Dalvik or Art, which is a different uh, instruction set from the original JVM. Uh, moving on to March. We're nearly, we're nearly home, we're nearly home. Google and uh, GitHub announced uh, actions extensions for uh, VCS code. Um, and they've got the Jetpack Media 3 library. GitHub announces uh, Copilot for pull request CLI and documentation. Um, the International Criminal Court issues an arrest warrant for a, a, a known war criminal. Not even going to say his name. Uh, and we have the Android Developers Privacy Week. Um, we had a Behind, scene, behind the scenes look at Android Studio and the Android developers backstage. Uh, Android Studio Flamingo RC1 and Giraffe Canary 11. We had the continuation of the Android 14 developer preview um, and uh, a touch of episode, a touch of multi platform episode 5 from multi platform in production to madness with Compose, uh, GitHub Copilot X, and a various array of Android X updates. So much like Android, Kotlin, or Professor, everything sounds better with an X at the end. Following that logic, GitHub announces GoPi Copilot X, but I prefer Professor X, actually, uh, using Open API to uh, automate writing unit tests, pull request descriptions, and provide CLI help. CLI help. Actually, the, the pull request part of this is actually really interesting because I'm super lazy with my descriptions. Um, I mean, you know, you could argue that code should document itself, but yeah. Um, then finally, April, you are here. Woohoo! <laughs> We've released, uh, got releases now in Android 80 and 81. Um, and all these lovely Android X releases. Uh, and then we've got Android 14 beta now. Uh, Android Gradle plugin 8.0. These aren't released actually that often, but they do have a lot of alpha releases. And um, we've got Android Studio Flamingo stable giraffe beta. So another stable release of Android Studio. We had uh, Kotlin Conf uh, just two weeks ago at, uh, in Amsterdam, amazing conference, uh, great t-shirts. Uh, check out the opening keynote, very highly recommended. Um, and we heard from uh, at Kotlin Conf that JetBrains, Google, and Gradle are sort of collaborated to make Kotlin DSL the default for Gradle build scripts, which is cool if you're not already using it. Whew, that's a lot of information. Turns out a lot of things happen in a year. How could we possibly think about how to you know, memorize or kind of process all this wonderful data but charts? Everyone loves charts. So, starting off with all the conferences from last year. So, starting in July, of course, uh, we had DroidCon Berlin, and then we have Chicago Roboto, uh, New York, in, uh, DroidCon New York in September. October was heavy. Um, it's always the busiest month for, Kotlin, for conferences. Um, I'm always running around. I'm kind of really disappointed that I only went to two of these, uh, but you know, I'm going to try my luck next year. Uh, continuing, we had the Android Dev Summit, DroidCon Kenya, and uh, the Advanced Kotlin Days and GDD Dev Fest. December was Christmas. Uh, trends show that October and November are actually the most productive months, I think, uh, but maybe only productive in theory because we're not actually working. We're in a conference. Or at least I am. Um, of course, these are only physical conferences. So moving on to January, we've got um, FOSTEM in February, uh, Apparise Conf in March, and PISA, Amsterdam, and Paris in April. Woohoo! And uh, Warsaw next month. Then San Francisco. 
Uh, we've also got some upcoming conferences. Um, by no means an exhaustive list. These are constantly updated all the time, but this is from the Android Study Group uh, online um, website where it shows upcoming conferences and how you can submit your com uh, call for papers. Uh, so we've got uh, Warsaw, uh, San Francisco, Berlin, nothing in August, and then Lisbon and Turin and London. Uh, I have definitely missed some things here, so... Uh, <laughs> How did I miss Dorit New York? I'm so sorry. I, pardon? Well, like I said, it's not an exhaustive list. Uh, I've missed a few here. <laughs> But definitely keep up to date and check out the call for papers. Um, get involved. It's a really rewarding experience. And maybe you can do a better job at tracking conferences. Um, of course, uh, it should be mentioned that there are a lot of online conferences. So um, the pandemic made a significant impact on the way we work and, and live. Uh, so a lot of people um, prefer to kind of uh, attend online, which is Awesome, uh, but we've got the Android Worldwide, uh, Women Who Code, Tech Makers, and uh, Android Dev Summit uh, Worldwide, and the uh, Ops Summit. Um, notice how there's, what, four Android Worldwide conferences here? That's busy. Um, we also saw at the Kotlin Conf opening keynote this year that the multi-platform libraries uh, available for Kotlin increased from roughly 700 to 1,200. Um, I'm directly lifting the image from the uh, um, from the blog article here, uh, because I really don't know how to map this into actual numbers, because the graph is a little bit, yeah. Anywho, um, we heard that 95% of the top 1,000 Android apps are in Kotlin, which is awesome. 1,000? Yeah, 1,000 sounds good, right? There's no more apps than that. We only need 1,000 apps. All good. Everyone stop developing. We're, if we reach 1,000, we can stop. Uh, furthermore, we discovered that the same cohort has 21% of uh, Jetpack Compose UI. So we've still got another 79% to conquer. Uh, I'm doing a cursory GitHub search. Um, so one of the numbers I noticed at the, at the Kotlin Conf was that one million libraries on GitHub uh, have Kotlin as a primary language. Um, I couldn't find this number myself, but in their defense, every time I searched GitHub, it gave me a different number. So it ranges from 82.6 to 74 uh, and everything in between. So I'm pretty sure this is just how many results you can return in a single search. Uh, but uh, using the modifier of topic, topic multi-platform as well, you've got 205. So that's an interesting thing. Um, but there are probably better ways of getting these metrics uh, that I just am not privy to. Uh, we saw 60 episodes of various podcasts. These are only five podcasts that I personally subscribe to. Uh, I recommend these, and if you have a podcast of your own, or if you know of a good one, please shout it out or let me know after the talk, um, and I can include it for next time. It's a very ongoing process here. <laughs> um, so we've got some Stack Overflow trends here, and you can see it doesn't look like a lot changed here, but actually, uh, due to the scale of Stack Overflow, uh, it's a very small increase. So um, we saw the trends uh, from Stack Overflow, so it was, I think they have a total of like 23 million questions and about 130,000 questions per month. So it doesn't look like a lot, but that's actually a 0 0.3 increase over the year, representing about 4,000 additional questions. So you can see the uh, Kotlin activity is increasing. Um, and not just Colin, sorry, multi uh, compose uh, here. Uh, and although not really indicative of any real trend or representation, I felt it interesting to kind of graph these release, the uh, release cadence of Android X libraries. So there's a significant peak in October, as we saw uh, at the same time there's a, a butt ton of conferences, um, with over 100 releases in a single month. That's a lot. Um, if you compare this to sort of community-driven, uh, community-developed libraries, of course, it's like apples and oranges. You can't really compare these things because Android X is a group of libraries maintained by Google, uh, whereas most libraries uh, maintained by the community have a release cadence of about once, twice a month. Um, and here is in November, you can see that, oh, sorry, October, the release of uh, Circuit, which is a compose-first navigation library that I've been helping with. Um, go check it out. It's awesome. And I thought it'd be quite interesting to kind of compare this to some arbitrary numbers as well, like uh, you know, how, many Kotlin, how many lines of code of Kotlin were written compared to, say, how many cups of coffee were drunk. So this was actually quite interesting to find out, like, to research this. So it, it's unfortunately based on sources from 2020, but uh, we consumed uh, 91 million kilograms or 91 million metric tons, or a fuck ton, 
uh, of coffee is consumed yearly. Uh, 91 is consumed by the US and uh, Germany just five. This is total consumption, not uh, co uh, consumption per person, as Eric Hellman um, notably instructed me, Finland gets the award for most cups of coffee per person drank. And I felt it was actually important uh, to include myself in this for posterity. Uh, you can see me at the bottom there. I don't drink coffee. But I do drink tea. I am British. Um, yeah, so I felt it's important to compare coffee metrics to tea metrics, you know, just for shits and giggles. Um, and for those interested, like a, um, the measurement here is an MTMG. Uh, is a million megagrams, or metric tons, also known as a shit ton, um, not to be confused with MGMT, which is a band that makes music. Uh, quickly covering uh, British politics again, uh, the head of the UK government is selected by uh, the government party members, which is actually re representative of like 0.29% of the British public, uh, which means the Prime Minister actually isn't voted by the British public. There's all this complaining about un uh, unelected Democrats. Uh, yeah, yeah. Um, but, you know, due to the exceptional efficiency of uh, the British people after leaving the European Union, there have been, uh, in the space when a, a preem should actually serve for four years, uh, we've had three in the last 12 months, so that's really efficient. Um, notably, Truss served the shortest ever term as a UK Prime Minister of 49 days. The work done to pension ratio there is incredible. Don't ever let it be said that UK is not a great place to work. And finally, for bonus points, or bonus internet points, can anybody name this galaxy? Okay, uh, I wouldn't know it either, so don't worry. Uh, it's the Perseus Galaxy Cluster. Um, now, back in May last year, uh, NASA released the sonification of this, and this is because the dense clouds in that area are so dense that they can actually carry vibrations, and that technically can carry sound. So they adjusted the waveform, adjusted the frequency to produce uh, sound, and uh, I'm going to try and uh, play it for you now to see if this works. Nope. <laughs> yeah, just two slides left. <laughs> um, so, something I felt about this is like there's so many releases, so much happening, so much change, so much news. And like whilst planning and researching this, there's a lot of stuff that I didn't know about, and actually it was a chance for me to learn as well, which is really quite nice. Um, and it might be a little bit daunting, uh, a little bit scary to, kind of, to think like, oh my god, I can't keep track of all this information. Uh, and I've only touched a part of it, like this is just the tip of the iceberg. But that's part of the fun, uh, it's learning something new. Um, and it's impossible to know everything, so it's important to be content with that and comfortable. Uh, so be good at what you know, be good to those who you know, and don't panic. See anything missing? Get in touch. Thank you. <laughs>